So, we continue with uh, electromagnetic shielding. So, attenuation due to absorption, reflections and multiple reflections, the details we will see and low frequency magnetic field shielding. So, previously we have already seen uh, this equation, uh, total shielding effectiveness is composed of three factors, one factor due to reflection loss at the two boundaries and one factor due to absorption in the metal. And one factor due to multiple reflection within metal. Now, let us look at the details of that. So, shielding absorption that is equal to e to the of gamma d, where we have seen gamma equal to alpha plus j beta and that is uh, nothing but 1 by delta which is the skin depth plus j beta for metals. So, from this uh, we can write uh, S a equal to, so, so if you take the real part of it because it is real part that is contributing to the attenuation, the imaginary part is only contributing to the phase. So, if you take the real part of it e to the power of alpha d equal to e to the power of uh, d by delta. So, in uh, decibels 20 log e to the power of d by delta is uh, nothing but 8.7 d by delta. d is the thickness of the shield that is equal to 8.7 times d square root of pi f mu sigma that is uh, the shielding effectiveness due to absorption phenomena is proportional to the thickness. More thickness means that more absorption and it is also proportional to the square root of frequency, higher frequency more absorption higher magnetic permeability more absorption, higher conductivity more absorption. So, this is uh, the attenuation due to absorption. Now, just understanding this formula also suggest methods on how we can have design effective shields. Say for example, you know by using thicker material, by using high permeability, high permeability materials like iron compared to aluminum by using high conductivity material. So, here there is a conflict because usually high conductivity material like copper are non magnetic. So, the product mu sigma need to be considered and higher frequencies. So, in this graph absorption loss is plotted against frequency for many common materials and two different thicknesses. We have selected copper 0.51 millimeter thickness and uh, a thicker one 3.2 millimeter thickness then same thicknesses, but for iron and aluminum also is taken and the properties of those materials are given. Relative permeability is 1 for copper and aluminum, conductivity is 1 for copper, relative conductivity and aluminum 0 0.6 for iron 0 0.1, mu r is 1000 for iron. This is what we assumed. Then you do the calculation, you can see that uh, uh, already at uh, a kilohertz iron with 3.2 millimeter thickness gives a quite substantial attenuation almost 100 dB attenuation. 
whereas uh, for copper and other materials uh, it is negligible. This is mainly due to the term mu, square root of mu coming in, square root of 1000 coming in. Now, at 100 kilohertz or let us say uh, 1 megahertz, uh, almost any thickness of this material gives fairly good attenuation, even 0.51 or aluminum or copper, everyone, all of them will give fairly good attenuation. So, for good absorption loss at high frequencies and with plane waves, you only need a thin foil to have good shielding, uh, purely based on absorption loss. Absorption loss increases with frequency and shield thickness. Iron offers more absorption loss than copper and aluminum of same thickness. So, this is a conclusion we can arrive. Now, attenuation due to reflection, E input, then E output, this is air, this is metal and this is out again, air. Now, you can write uh, the transmission coefficients here, tau, previously we have seen it as tau 1, 2 and uh, E out tau 2, 3, it is equivalent to that, that we write here. Similarly, for H field also tau 1, 2 and tau 2, 3, you can see the difference in the formula also. Then reflection coefficient is written as E input by E output and you can write this. So, this is uh, nothing but uh, what you have seen before, uh, 1 by tau 1, 2, tau 2, 3 that you have seen before. Uh, we know that uh, for metal impedance is uh, square root of omega mu by sigma and which is very small compared to the free space impedance for plane waves. Now, due to this we can make some approximations. Most of the electric field is reflected at the air metal interface itself and most of the magnetic field is transmitted through the air metal interface. So, this observation we can see from this uh, coefficients. So, this is the magnetic field uh, H 0 is the magnetic field. So, Z w is uh, large value. whereas Zm is a very small value. So, you have quite a low electric field falling here, but uh, most of the field is uh, magnetic field is falling inside. So, that is the meaning of these two statements. Uh, since most of the magnetic field is transmitted through the air metal interface, attenuation in the shield thickness is more important for magnetic fields. Whereas, uh, for electric field already reflection is quite large. So, let us look at some details of attenuation due to reflection. This is the expression and for plane waves you since Z m is very small compared to Z 0, uh, Z s r can be written as Z0 by 4 Z m and in uh, decibels you can write it like this 20 log free space impedance divided by 4 square root of uh, conductivity divided by uh, angular frequency times 
permeability, magnetic permeability. So, attenuation due to reflection is largest at low frequencies because if uh, frequency is low, this becomes very small and high conductivity materials. If conductivity is large, attenuation is uh, large also and small as for high frequencies and magnetic materials. So, it, it is kind of an opposite effect for absorption. If you have high frequency, uh, high conductivity and high magnetic materials, you have higher absorption loss. But for reflection, uh, high conductivity reflection is uh, quite good, that is fine, there is no change in that, but high frequency and high uh, permeability, the trend is opposite. So, since uh, always reflection and absorption they are coming together, what will be the final product? It will be hard to predict. So, shield in the near field region. So, in the near field region lambda equal to 2 pi delta in metals uh, and it is much smaller than free space wavelength. Um, so, wave propagation in the shield can still be approximated as TEM because uh, of the uh, still that thickness can be radically long. So, we replace set 0 with the appropriate that is in the free space uh, impedance, we replace it with appropriate wave impedance Z e or Z h. So, in previous expressions over here set 0 will be replaced by either impedance near field impedance for electric field or near field impedance for the magnetic field. And that is given from chapter 1 module 4 as 1 by 2 pi f epsilon r for electric dipole and 2 pi f mu r for magnetic loop and set 0 equal to 377 ohm far field in air. So, let us substitute this and see what will happen. So, if you do the calculation with these uh, substitutions for free space impedance for electric dipole this formula, for magnetic dipole this formula into the reflection loss formula for electric field at r equal to 30 meters you get a curve like this. So, re refraction loss in copper shield is very high and this is the ion shield and this is uh, for reference the plane wave whereas, for the magnetic field reflection loss is quite low, still there is a refraction loss, but it is very quite low compared to the electric field. But at very high frequencies the approaches uh, plane wave reflection loss. So, this is the result of the calculation. So, low frequency magnetic field you cannot use reflection as much uh, for uh, shielding away the magnetic field, but for electric field even a thin foil will help even close to the source. Now, attenuation due to multiple reflection here it is uh, 1 minus rho 2 1 rho 2 3 e to the power of minus 2 gamma d. So, these are the reflection coefficients at the two boundaries from left to right. Then if you rewrite it in this particular way and uh, since sedum is very small you can approximate it by this expression and if delta, if d is far greater than delta, that is uh, if you are 
if, the, if uh, you are at very high frequencies, then SMR equal to almost 1. You do not have uh, at high frequencies delta is very uh, small, so D is very large. So, SMR equal to 1. So, you do not have any effect of uh, uh, multiple reflections basically. Whereas, when D equal to delta, already uh, multiple reflection is uh, 0 0.865. So, your total reflection S equal to SA times SMR times SM S reflection. So, this is uh, greater than 1, this is greater than 1 and this factor become less than 1. So, overall there is a reduction in shielding effectiveness. In dB, it will be since it is less than 1, it will appear as minus 1.3 dB, whereas this is positive. And for delta, for d equal to delta by 100, for extremely low frequencies, multiple reflection is uh, destroying the compensating for the reflection quite a lot. Effect of multiple reflection, attenuation due to multiple reflection is 0 or negative. It can be neglected if thickness is much greater than skin depth. Extremely thin metallic films may be almost transparent to electromagnetic waves. This is one effect. Uh, so, previously we have seen that uh, if you just look at the reflection or absorption, uh, even a very thin shield is very effective. But if you include the phenomena of multiple reflection, you find that uh, it destroy the many of the beneficial effect of reflections and very thin metallic films may be even almost transparent to electromagnetic waves. Low frequency magnetic field shielding. So, we have seen that low frequency magnetic field shielding is a challenge. Oh, we have also seen that uh, the absorption, absorptive attenuation is proportional to square root of uh, permeability mu. Therefore, uh, you can use high permeability materials for shielding. So, in high permeability materials shown here, most of the magnetic field is uh, confined to this material. For example, mu metal. So, this will protect the inner volume from magnetic fields. Then instead of mu metal, you can use superconducting materials. You increase the conductivity, you manipulate the conductivity. So, these are the two methods that uh, you can use to increase the absorptive attenuation. Now, there is another way also that is by generation of opposing flux. So, we know that if you have a decurrence inside, induced currents in shorter turns create a magnetic flux that will be opposing the main flux. So, that way also if you have a mesh like structure, you can create those uh, shorter turns and you can create opposing flux and try to reduce uh, the magnetic field penetrating inside. So, this uh, finishes uh, this particular module.